Thank you very much. Someone's dreading darling boy. 3,900 dreading darling boys have fallen on their sabers or landmines. As is the case of the uh, young soldier in this next story, this is a, a true story, as true as it can be, for a song that was sort of delivered to a songwriter by a soldier who had recently passed away. Kay Power, a friend of mine in Portland, Oregon, wrote this next song. She thought she was sitting down to write a song about immigration, and she started it off saying, Under a foreign sky, my fate awaits me. And about at that point in the writing of the song, she felt like she was being surrounded by the spirit of this young soldier by the name of Travis John Braddock Nall. Now, Travis John was a boy from Kate's neighborhood. Not a boy. He was 21, but a boy. And, uh, and he had gone off and done his tour of duty in Iraq, and he'd come home. And, uh, but because his buddies were still back there, he decided that he wanted to be back there, too. He wanted everybody to stick together. And so he went back to Iraq and was, and was killed pretty soon thereafter by a landmine. Now, Kate didn't know him personally, but he was one of a number of boys from the neighborhood who had gone off to war. And so this really, the news of Travis's death really rocked the little northeast quadrant of Portland, Oregon, rocked the city, and I'm sure it rocked the whole state as well. And so Kate sits down, and she thinks she's writing a song about immigration, and then all of a sudden she feels like Travis John is just swirling around her and, and asking her to tell his story. And so Kate does what any good songwriter would do when visited by the muse. And she sits there with her banjo and her pen and her paper, and she gets that song out. And she couldn't sing the song for a long time, because getting a song that way is a powerful experience, she says. And, uh, and trying to sing the song would just make her cry every time. But finally, she and her husband, Steve Einhorn, who perform as a duo, uh, finally got into the studio to record the song, only to find out they're, they're telling the engineer and other people in the room about the song and about Travis. And they say, oh, yeah, Travis. He helped build this studio. And so everywhere Kate goes now, she's got, she's got a friend <laughs> in the form of Travis John. And so she wrote this song, and as soon as I heard the song, which was in 2007, I asked her if I could do what she was doing, which is to sing the song at every show that we give until the war is over. And she said, of course you can. Of course you can. Apparently Pete Seeger was trying to get Bruce Springsteen to sing this song and didn't quite get him to do it, so uh, missed an opportunity there. But um, I then asked Kate how she would feel about me passing the song on to my audiences via a piece of sheet music. And she said, I think that's a great idea. So now we're bi-coastal with our one-song peace movement. And on the table back there is a little half-sheet card with Travis John's song on it. It's got the chords and the lyrics. On the back is a little, little bit about Travis's story. You can help yourselves to that on your way out if you're so moved and join the one-song peace movement. In the meantime, we'll just hear the song. And it's just called Travis John. Now the joy is 
dead and done I am Thank you very much. 